Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. Illinois final line I football season, regular football season is now over. They end the season eight and four. And we're going to just, just kind of recap their game versus Northwestern. They got the big win, 41-3 to three over their rival Northwestern Wildcats. Uh, the Northwestern Wildcats did not have the season that I predicted after, after getting to see their practices uh, and see how Coach Fitzgerald runs things there. They did not end the way they thought. But Illinois also did not end the way we all thought they would either, whether it was the beginning of the year or during the year. But it is now over for the regular season as they wait for their bowl game. We'll talk about very quickly their game versus Northwestern, but then we're going to talk about what this means for the Illinois football program moving forward, what Coach Bielma has done and his staff. Um, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Follow it right on Apple and iTunes. Follow me at Coach underscore Steve72 on Twitter. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. All that good stuff. Illinois comes off with the dominant win, 41-3 to over the Northwestern Wildcats, um, playing at Ryan Field uh, up in Evingston, Illinois. Uh, that sent Northwestern into a 1-11 and season. I'll be curious to see if Coach Fitzgerald makes any changes there. Uh, their season did not go the way I thought, watching their practices and having some insight into that team. I thought that their season would be different. They did lose some close games. Uh, but this was a win Illinois needed to keep their name in the hunt to go to the Big Ten Championship. They they needed a lot of luck to get there after dropping a few games uh, with the Nebraska win over Iowa. Illinois had to win versus Northwestern. And then Indiana had to beat Purdue. And Indiana did not hold up their end of the bargain. They did not beat Purdue. So Purdue gets to go to the Big Ten title game, and Illinois has to sit and watch. Uh, being very close to going to Indiana, to Indianapolis to play Michigan in the Big Ten title for that rematch. Um, overall, this was a very good team overall win for Illinois. Defense stepping up, doing their thing. Offense was very balanced. Something that we don't normally see is Chase Brown having um, on uh, minus or yeah, minus 100 yards in rushing. But Reggie Love the third really stepped up with 11 carries and 85 yards. He'll be a big-time runner for them later on next year. Chase Brown with only 19 carries and 61 yards. Tommy DeVito had himself um, a, a pretty good, decent game, just a, uh, just an average game, but that's what Illinois looks for. We're not looking for anything for a 400-yard passer, 300-yard passer. He was 12 of 1,836 yards. He had the interception, did have a rushing touchdown. Reggie Love had a rushing touchdown. Chase Brown also had a rushing touchdown. Um the defense did its thing. It you know there was no rusher for Northwestern over 100 yards. Uh, their even passing was not over 100 yards for a person. They had three different types of people throw the football for only 167 yards. The defense looked, bounced back from some injuries they had. The offensive line looked pretty good. Um, they started off a little slow in the first quarter, only scoring seven, and then they scored 10, 17, and seven uh, to wrap up a eight and four. Regular season for Illinois, five and four in the Big Ten. Um, we'll do a different episode when we get to the bowl game and really talk about the Illinois football team. Um, but once again, coming into this week, we have to say thoughts and prayers to Coach Bielma and his wife and the family. Coach Bielma was coming off the previous week with his mother passing away, going through the funeral, and then coming into the week for Northwestern, his wife's father so coach Bielma's father-in-law passed away as well so just a hard thing for that family to be going through coach Bielma showed up to coach and you could tell each week last week versus Michigan and this week they played tough and what coach Bielma has done in two years has Illinois put on notice in the Big Ten on ESPNs of the world on Fox Sports of the world and this season has meant a lot for the regular season. We still have to wait to see who they're going to get in their bowl game. This season meant a lot for Illinois fans um, as long as we continue to move forward because we have seen these type of seasons with a Ron Zook before where we kind of, you know, we win a little bit and the next year we kind of come back down. But I even think back in the Ron Zook times we haven't seen where we go five and six or five and seven and – the next year, turn around and go eight and four. And during the season, being ranked, we were actually ranked in the college football playoff. We were all those things. We were in contention to go to the Big Ten title game, and we just did not pull it off. Uh, the coach, when you get hired as a head coach, you have either a three year or a five year plan. 
not necessarily saying that in those years you have a national championship all the time, not necessarily saying in those years that you have a certain type of championship. In those plans you have where you have levels. So some of them will say, you know, learn to win, expect to win, um, you know, and then championships. Some say, okay, we have to recruit. Then we learn how to win. Then we expect to win. And then we have championships or they, they label them differently. And I don't know what Coach Bielema's years of plans were. He's hinted at him saying that he's not here to win five games. He's not here to win this. He's here to win lots of games. He's here to win and compete for a Big Ten championship. That's what he did at Wisconsin. That's what he wants to do for Illinois. And coming into the year, the over-under for them was either four or six games. I do believe when we talked about the Big Ten and each team and what could possibly happen, looking back through my notes, um, you know, I believe Illinois was only about four or five. So that they really hit it out of the ballpark with their win to losses. Sorry for the papers. I'm trying to find the notes. Um, I do believe it was over four, four and a half wins for them to go eight and four. I don't think anybody, even us Illinois fans, sat here and said that that's what was going to happen. Um, as fans, as you know, we would love to sit here and say, yep, this is exactly what's going to happen. This is. Um, no matter how diehard of fans we were, yes, Illinois was um, over under four and a half wins after going five and seven last year. I did take the over. Um, they went way over. They were seven and one at one point, and then they went into a three game skid, um, losing to some teams they probably shouldn't have. Um, they did have different injuries, they had different refs um, make some questionable calls. But it was it was an exciting regular season to watch the coaching staff and to, to see what they were doing with their different position groups, to have a quarterback like Tommy DeVito come in and learn and be that championship type of person, to have Coach Lenny Jr. come in with a new offense and that offense get picked up pretty well, uh, to see the defense step up under Coach Walters. Um, hopefully, no offense to him, hopefully he does not go on to get a head coaching job. He can stay and be the defensive coordinator for as long as he wants. Um but the team just looked more a, a lot more complete against Northwestern than we saw against Michigan and Michigan State and you know a couple of those teams that we should not have lost to. But I think as Illinois fans, again, we have to take a step back and say, did we really expect this eight win season? The coaches did, the players probably did, but they take it week by week. As us diehard fans, I said over four and a half, and I said they were going to win six to nine. There is a window there to win six to nine, and they they got there. They got to the eight. But no matter what us diehard Illinois fans thought or predicted, I don't know if we could have predicted some of the things that they pulled off, being top defense in the country, top scoring defense in the country, takeaways, tackles, um, yards per game. Didn't expect that. We didn't expect to be anywhere ranked in the top 25. We did not expect to be even in the, in the words college football playoff, even though I know we weren't top four. They go through the rankings, and we made a college football playoff ranking in their top, and we never were uttering those words. And so on a different episode, I said, it feels like we're a year ahead of schedule. It feels like this is the type of conversation we'd be having next year. And one thing that I think we have to realize is we don't even fully have all of Coach Bielma and staff's recruits. And we have some. You're seeing some of the, of the quarterback from the transfer portal. You're seeing some from the offensive line perspective some from the defensive perspective, but they have different recruits coming in from a high school. We don't know what type of other transfers they're going to get in the transfer portal. So there's things moving that we haven't even gotten to talk about or see yet. These are still Coach Lovey Smith recruits. And I know it's not the NFL necessarily, but in college you're recruiting players to play your type of system. So Coach Lovey Smith was recruiting players to play a Tampa 2, cover 2 all the time-ish players. And that's what they were coached in, and that was muscle memory. You saw offensive recruits recruit all over the place. We saw 
pro style offenses under that old regime. We saw spread to just throw bubble screens. We saw kind of a spread option zone stuff. And that's what they were recruited for. I'm going to talk to some people from the Illinois football staff. They have to kind of coach those those things out of the old players. But now that you start getting in different players, your recruits to do what you want to do, to coach them and what you need to do, that's kind of what we're seeing. And that's why I think we're a year ahead of schedule, which is exciting. But the Big Ten is only getting better. Um, coach Luke Fickle leaving Cincinnati, so, you know, reported today to go to Wisconsin. That's going to be big time in the West. Then you also have Coach Matt Rule going to Nebraska. So the West is just going to start to take off. And Coach Bielma understands that. He doesn't back down from challenges. And just the culture he's brought in, the excitement that's brought in to Champaign and all of Illinois fans, to just be excited to turn on and watch, to be excited that it's talked about on ESPN. There's even critics there's people being crit- – he's being criticized about how they handled the end of the Michigan game, uh, being criticized why they're on that losing streak. Talked about on different podcasts and different shows. And I think there's going to be – we're still going to fly under the radar a little bit, but I think they're slowly getting on notice. They're putting more money into the coaching staff. They're putting more money into nutrition and conditioning and the weight program. They're putting in more money into Memorial Stadium. And people are on notice with this Illinois team. Now, as Illinois fans, I know we have to sit here and be cautious. And we don't want to see people going after Coach Bielma's job because of the losing streak. We don't want to see if something happens in this bowl game about his job. We've seen that with Brad Underwood. We need to keep Coach Bielma around as long as he wants to be here. And figure out how to keep this coaching staff together because of the progress that was made, the excitement brought to the program, uh, the offense being in its first year, um, working with non-number one receivers because we have a bunch of role receivers and that's no disrespect to them because I said throughout the year they've gotten much better They ran the routes harder. They got open. Tom DeVito was the quarterback to get them the ball, to throw them open. And they just got better as the year went on. We just, if you look at other big-time Division I programs, they always have the guy to go to when it's third and four. You know, we had Chase Brown and Isaiah Williams. And, yeah, that kind of works. But at the end of the day, Isaiah Williams is not always the guy to go up and get the ball. He's not always that guy to do that. We had to kind of spread it around. So once we start getting the guy in there on offense, the offensive line continues to grow. We do have to replace a quarterback after this bowl game. But I think as an Illinois fans, we have to be excited. We have to trust the process. Um, I don't want to see any more, well, we can't handle expectations. Well, the expectation was four and a half wins. So the fact that we were seven and one, they're learning how to win. And people really criticized this Illinois team when they were 7-1, and one, everything was going for them, and then they said they crumbled under the pressure. Well, maybe some of that's true. There were injuries to this team. Other teams gave them their best shot. And I'm not making excuses. Coach Bielan's not going to make excuses. But ultimately it is, if you're sitting there at 7-1, and one, now you have to learn how to win. You know, there's building a culture – There's winning, learning how to win, expect to win. They are all different. They're all together, but they're all different. And what I mean by that is you have to win, then you have to learn how to win. So they were winning. Now you have to learn how to keep it. You have to learn how to win. They were learning how to win, and then it kind of slipped out of their hands because maybe they jumped a gun and expect to win expecting to win where they haven't fully learned how to win. So going into next year, no matter how this bowl game ends next year is going to be expect to win. They're going to still learn how to win, but the expectation is start to shift to expect to win and going through the, the process coach Nick Saban talks about it all the time. 
trust the process, continue the process each and every day, each and every week. And it will lead to good things. And it changes. It always changes. Each and every year, there's things that stay the same. But there's also things that change. They change all the time depending on who you play, depending on what kind of coaching staff you bring in, what type of players you have, because you have to tweak. No matter what you recruit for, you're going to recruit more for what you're trying to do. But ultimately, if a guy does come to your school that's very athletic, you found a way to get them to fit into your system, but you also tweak some things to help them be successful. Not necessarily what you see in the NFL. So I think we're a year or two ahead of schedule because we're still learning how to win. And then it's going to gradually shift to expect to win. Then it's going to shift to even more culture and sustainability. That's what you know, Mr. Whitman, the AD there, Josh Whitman, has said that this is not going to be a one-hit wonder. It can't be a two-hit wonder. It's got to be each and every year that we continue to have that standard and be there. And you can just feel that with the basketball program, even the women's basketball program, the new hire, the energy around there with Mr. Whitman, Josh Whitman leading the way. With Coach Underwood and Coach Beal and all of them working together, the baseball team has been good. They're building a hockey team. It just feels that everything is coming together as this culture that we're trying to get to. I hate Ohio State to the world, but you want to get to the Ohio State to the world, the Michigans of the world. Uh, you want to get to the Alabamas of the world, you know, and that's going to take a long time. And it's, we have to be patient and we can't sit here and expect all these things. We, as Illinois fans, we understand what this program has been through, what has happened to this program. We're not a top tier program yet. Coach Bielma wants it to be there. I want it to be there. It's on its way. But just from a fan perspective, because I'm a coach as well, as a fan perspective, we've seen what has happened with this program. We do good, and then it falls apart. And then we just kind of stay in this, you know, we're on Groundhog Day all the time. Well, we're a three-win team. Well, we're a two-win team. Well, we're a four-win team. Well, hopefully we can sustain this 7 to 10, 11, 12-win mark. And we saw how we could compete with Michigan, who beat Ohio State Michigan beat Ohio State, which was people are predicting to almost win a national title, and Illinois almost pulled it off against Michigan. So the fact that we're there with those type of players to continue to grow in the system, Coach Bielma has done an outstanding job, and I don't care if we're waiting for Chase Brown needs to be in the Heisman contender and Coach Bielma needs to be the coach of the year. Coach Hypo is going to be up there for that because of their season. I don't care. Tennessee, no offense to Illinois, everything, has this richer tradition, richer history of more consistent – than Illinois has. Coach Bielema is the coach of the year, in my opinion. So I know we still have a bowl game. Coach Bielema, from all Illinois fans, thank you for this regular season. You are not done yet. You are building to all the assistant football coaches. Coach Miller, offensive line coach, I personally have to talk to all those assistant coaches. Thank you for this amazing regular season of 8-4, and four, competing, almost getting to the Big Ten title game. Building off of that, you will get there. We Illinois fans, Thank you for the hard work you've done. We are on board with you. We ride with you. And we are not done yet. Nation, be on the lookout for Illinois football. That's been another episode of the Coach Steve Show. Uh, we've been hiatus. Basketball started. I am a real coach, football and basketball and baseball. Um, Make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe button on the YouTube channel, follow and rate it on Apple and iTunes. Follow me at Coach underscore Steve72 on Twitter. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Um, football coaches, we're going to try to get coaches back on here. You want to be a part of it? You want to come on and talk some football, anything else, let me know. Um, so go do, go do all that for me, please, and thank you. Um, thank you guys for watching and or listening. This is Coach Steve, and we will see you guys for Illinois football and big news and when we get to the bowl game. See you guys later.